Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So transport of water from endodermis into xylem. So now let us see how is water transported from endodermis to xylem. Now here active transport of sodium ions by carrier proteins take place into xylem. Now let us try to understand it in a very simple way. Let us suppose this is your endodermis and this is xylem. So now the question is how water will enter from endodermis to xylem. Now what happens is that in the endodermis there are many ions for example the sodium ions are present in the endodermis. So these sodium ions are carried from endodermis into xylem by active transport. So these sodium ions are carried by active transport. What does that mean? That means here the concentration of sodium ions is less. The concentration of sodium ion is more here. But still by applying some energy they are being transported from endodermis to xylem. So that xylem has more and more of sodium ions. Now as these ions enter into xylem what happens? Solute potential will become more negative. Correct? Because the solute concentration will increase. So the solute potential will become more negative. As a result, the water potential will decrease. So here, the water potential will decrease. So therefore, when you talk about the uh, movement of water or when you talk about diffusion or osmosis, so water will start moving from endodermis to xylem. So the water movement of from endodermis to xylem is totally governed by this active transport of ions by the carrier proteins into xylem. So here you can see first it, the water is absorbed from the soil by the root hair. From root hair it can follow either the symplastic pathway or the apoplastic pathway. In symplastic pathway it moves through the cytoplasm of cells and it reaches the xylem finally like this. Whereas in apoplastic it passes through the cell walls and reaches the endodermis. And from the endodermis so these structures are xylem. So the, here you see these structures are xylem. So from there it enters into xylem. So water potential decreases in xylem. Now as we know by the concept of what osmosis that water moves from area of high water potential towards low water potential. Therefore water moves by passive transport down the potential gradient. Now water moves by passive transport because they are moving along the concentration gradient. So they do not need any external energy. So water moves by passive transport but the ions that is the sodium ions were transported by active transport. So this is how water will reach the xylem. Now once the water has reached the xylem, now the challenge is how xylem will take this water up against the gravitational force. So one small help will be done by the water potential because we saw that the water potential decreases as we go up the tree but that is not strong enough to govern uh, the movement upward movement in big plants so there has to be some mechanisms which will enable water to move up so now we have understood how water is absorbed by root hairs from root hairs it will get into the deeper layers of roots from there it will get into the xylem of root but from xylem of root it has to move to xylem of stem and xylem of leaves so that has to be governed by some mechanism which will help water to move upward. So let us look at those mechanisms which will help water move up the plant from the roots. So there are two mechanisms which together make this possible. So what are they? First is root pressure and the second is transpiration pull. So these two together help water move in the upward direction against the gravitational pull. So now we will talk about root pressure and transpiration pull in detail one by one. So let us start our discussion with root pressure. So what is root pressure? Now it is a positive pressure that is developed in roots due to water being transported into them. Now as I said when the root hairs absorb water what happens from the soil. So water moves from the soil inside the roots. Now it is that same phenomenon where more and what, more water enters inside the cell and the cell starts swelling up. 
that is one scenario so when more and more water starts entering inside the root the water will develop a pressure inside the root and that pressure is known as root pressure so it is a positive pressure and it is responsible for pushing water up to small heights now when more and more water inside enter, enter inside the roots they will exert a pressure and because of that pressure water will tend to move upwards and this is how water will move again when when the water will move to this region too much of water has entered here so pressure will be created because of that water will be forced to move up again wherever it moves more water comes in so pressure is created and that is how water keeps on moving upwards and that is how root pressure enables water to move up but this root pressure is able to control the movement only up to smaller heights and not to uh, to a very bigger heights so that is why uh, we have another concept of transpiration pull so that contributes mostly for upward movement of water the root pressure just contributes a little bit towards upward movement of water it is just that it it uh, adds up with transpiration pull to enable water to move upwards thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.